Hello and welcome to Arirang News Break, live from Seoul, I'm Han Daen. We begin with global reaction to North Korea's latest provocation. The UN Security Council has convened an emergency meeting to discuss Pyongyang's launch of a submarine-launched ballistic missile, which was a clear violation of UN resolutions. The United States and the European Union have also responded with strong remarks. Kwon Soa reports. North Korea's submarine-launched ballistic missile test goes against the UN Security Council's resolutions on the regime, including the latest, strongest resolution 2270 in effect since March. In a move to condemn the launch and discuss measures to make Pyongyang abide by international rules, the 15-member council gathered at the UN headquarters Wednesday local time at the request of the United States and Japan. Earlier this month, a similar meeting triggered by North Korea's launch of ballistic missiles failed to issue a press statement due to China's opposition. Earlier, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon expressed deep concern about the latest developments and said Pyongyang had ignored international calls for it to change its attitude. He urged North Korea to take measures to ease tension and at the same time return to talks on its denuclearization. Similarly, the United States on Wednesday strongly condemned Pyongyang's SLBM launch. We call on the DPRK to refrain from actions and rhetoric that further raise tensions in the region and focus instead on taking concrete steps towards fulfilling its commitments and international obligations. At the White House, spokesperson Josh Ernest said the possibility of additional sanctions cannot be ruled out, but at this point it's difficult to judge the need for them. The EU says North Korea must, quote, halt all missile launches using ballistic missile technology and abandon its ballistic missile programs in a complete, verifiable and irreversible manner. France also criticized Pyongyang's test through its foreign ministry, saying the launch threatens regional and global peace and security. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Meanwhile, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has described the test firing of the submarine-launched ballistic missile as the regime's, quote, greatest success. The North state-run Korean Central News Agency reported Thursday, while closely supervising Wednesday's launch, Kim highly praised new developments of the state's SLBM technology, saying it pushes North Korea to the very front rank of nuclear military powers. The missile was fired from waters near the eastern coastal city of Shinpo and flew over 500 kilometers before falling into the East Sea. South Korean government officials and military experts say the launch is proof North Korea has made technological progress as the solid fuel missile displayed improved guidance and re-entrance capabilities. Japan has confirmed that it was the first North Korean missile to come down within its air, uh, air defense identification zone. South Korea's ruling party held its first policy coordination meeting with the government and the presidential office since its new leader, Lee Jong-hyun, took over the reins earlier this month. Officials say the three sides vowed to make improving the people's livelihoods their top priority, while calling for the opposition bloc's cooperation in that matter. The Senuri party's new leader emphasized the importance of close cooperation as they jointly hold the responsibility of conducting state affairs. Prime Minister Minister Hwang Yuan called on all political parties to approve several economy-related bills, including one on labor reform, which is still in limbo at the National Assembly. President Park's chief of staff Yi Won Jong urged the swift passage of a multi-billion dollar supplementary budget and a bill on regulation-free zones. He also called for measures to stabilize the economy ahead of next month's Chuseok holiday. The death toll from the powerful earthquake to strike central Italy has reached at least 159, with scores more still missing. The quake struck at the worst time in the dead of night, burying hundreds of people in their homes. Volunteers and rescue teams are continuing search through the ruins for survivors. Park Jong-hong brings us the latest. Residents in the quake-devastated Italian towns are sleeping in tents, exposed to the elements. In the meantime, volunteers and rescue crews are in a race against time to free those still trapped under the rubble. The victims were concentrated mainly in three municipalities. At the moment, at least 120 lives were lost. This is a death toll that is not final. 
The Prime Minister also called for national unity, sharing the grief of the nation. The magnitude 6.2 earthquake flattened mountain towns in central Italy, including Amatrice, which was voted one of Italy's most beautiful historic towns. Many people were caught off guard as the quake struck in the middle of the night. Experts say the damage was more severe than expected due to the relatively shallow epicenter, just four kilometers below the Earth's surface. Italy's Earthquake Institute reported 150 aftershocks, with the strongest measuring 5.5. The army was mobilized along with special heavy equipment, and the Treasury has released 265 million U.S. dollars in emergency funds. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News. Suspected militants have stormed the Kabul campus of the American University of Afghanistan. Sources say one security guard was killed and more than 20 students were wounded in the attack on Wednesday evening local time. Witnesses say some students jumped from second floor windows to escape the gunfire and explosions, breaking their legs. Faculties and dozens of students were trapped in the compound. A government official says elite Afghan forces have surrounded the university. Two gunmen were said to be hiding inside the building, and a clearing operation had been launched. No one has yet claimed responsibility for the attack. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more top stories here on Arirang. Thank you for watching.